Good morning, ICT class. Welcome to Parak Model Community High School online class. So, to begin our lesson, let us first discuss what is the meaning of computer. So, computer is an electronic device that has the capacity to manipulate data, solve problems, and make some calculation. So, nowadays, we use computers to make our job easier. Types of computers and hardware. Computer, again, is a device that access input, process data, stores data, and produces output all according to a series of stored instructions. Hardware is one part of the computer that includes electronic and mechanical devices that process the data and it refers to the computer as well as the peripheral devices. Software a computer program that tells a computer how to perform particular tasks. Network, two or more computers and other devices that are connected for the purpose of sharing data and programs. While peripheral devices is used to expand the computer's input, output, and storage capability. Other performance and processing, we have boot process, data, information, output, input, and base 2 binary code. So we use these when we are uh, starting to use our computers. For example, in the boot process, it's when you turn on your computers. The data, these are the information or the words that you type inside your computer or the, the things that you install. Information, process, stored, or transmitted data once we have already typed. For example, the commands you use in Excel or Words or PowerPoint, the output will be the result. For example, you're going to print it, it is called the output. Or if you see your uh, codes in your monitor, it is also called the output. Input, information that is created or collected and fed into the system. Based to binary code, again, we use 0 and 1. This is used when you do programs inside your computer. We also have the types of computers. So as you see in the picture, these are the old styles of computers. They have a big monitor. A personal computer is designed to meet the computer needs of an individual. So we call this a microcomputer. It provides access to a wide variety of computing applications such as word processing, photo editing, email, and internet. So all of us are familiar with computers. I think all of you have already seen a computer. A microcomputer. A microcomputer that feeds on a desk and runs on power from an electrical wall outlet. Some of you may have the desktop computers or the one that are uh, flat already. The CPU can be housed in either vertical or horizontal case. A separate components, keyboard, mouse, etc. that are each plugged into the computer. So this is your uh, system unit, but some of us are familiar with it as they call it a CPU, and this is your speaker, and this is your monitor. So the correct uh, name for this is the system unit. So this is an example of a laptop computer. So again, all of you are familiar with this laptop. But the latest model of laptops don't have the disk drive. A portable compact computer that can run an electrical wall outlet or a battery unit. The components are keyboard, mouse, are in a compact unit. Usually more expensive than a comparable desktop because they are handy. You can bring them anywhere. Sometimes called a notebook. We are sold a notebook, a laptop, a netbook. Workstation. The powerful desktop computer designed for special tasks. It can tackle tasks that require a lot of processing speed. It can also be an ordinary personal computer attached to a LAN local area network. For example, in an office or a computer lab, you call them as workstation because there are so many computers or machines that you can see inside this workplace. 
and also they are connected with a local area network or what we call the LAN. Super computer. A computer that was the fastest in the world at the time it was constructed. It can tackle tasks that would not be practical for other computers. The typical uses of these are daybreak codes, modeling weather systems, and then the mainframe. It is a large, expensive computer capable of simultaneously processing data for hundreds or thousands of users. So usually the mainframe, these are the ATM machines, or the vending machine, you call this a large computer. It is used to store, manage, and process large amounts of data that need to be reliable, secure, and centralized. So, the best example are the ATM machine, usually housed in a closed size component. Server. So, here is an example of server. It's the purpose is to serve, or from the word itself, server. A computer that has the purpose of supplying its users with data is usually through the use of a LAN or local area network. So, you can see this inside our computer laboratory. So, there is one server, but there are so many pieces that are connected with our server. Also called PDA or Personal Digital Assistant. So, it looks like a tablet. If you notice, it has also the, have the pen or the stylus. A computer that fits into a packet runs on batteries. It is used while holding the unit in your hand. So for today, they are the tablet, so they are already rechargeable. You don't need to buy battery. Typical use as an appointment book, address book, calculator, and notepad. Some professionals or businessmen uses this uh, handheld device in their work to avoid bringing notebooks, ball pens, and papers. Can be synchronized with a personal microcomputer as well. So let's proceed now to the computer components hardware. So in this picture, you see the whole setup of a computer. I said a while, as I said a while ago, this is an example of a system unit. It is a case that holds the power supply, storage device, and the circuit boards, including the motherboard. So this is the uh, main brain of our computers or laptops. Without this, if this is damaged, your work or the things that you see will be gone. The central processing unit, where the processing in computer takes place, it often called the brain of the computer. Yes. We use them to gather information and transform the information. It's example, the keyboard. We use the keyboard for us to input data inside their computer. There are arrangement of letters, numbers, and special function keys that act as the primary input device to the computer. An input device that allows the user to manipulate objects on the screen by moving the device along the surface or desk. And a circuit board that gives the computer the ability to accept audio input, play sound files, and produce audio output through the speakers or headphones. Input device is the modem, a device that sends and receives data to and from computers over the telephone lines. Again, input, these are the devices that you can touch with your bare hands. Output devices that display the print or transmit the results of processing from the computer's memory. Input is the monitor, because when you input, you can see that your work in the monitor. It displays the device that forms an image by converting electrical signals from the computer into points of colored light on the screen. The density of the grid used to display or print text and graphics, the greater the horizontal and vertical density, the higher the resolution. Pixels is the smallest unit in a graphic image computer display device used as a matrix of pixels to display text and graphics. So in the pixels, you will see the resolution, or how clear is your picture or a diskette. These are called the diskette. We use a flash drive. Next is so how to device to produce text or graphical images and paper. So the things that we put in our inside our computer that you see in your monitor, you can print them, especially if they, they are only documents of information like pictures. Output devices that receive signals from the computer sound card to play music, narration, and sound effect. 
Example, when you want to play music while doing your work or watch something, the volume can be on your speakers. Or you can hear them by the use of your speaker. Thank you. That is your short introduction of your computer programming subject. I hope you learned something. See you again in our next topic.